some people are saying now that, that this, is a, this is a time when we have to put aside environmental concerns and focus on getting the economy moving again. And that idea is probably um, 180 degrees wrong. This is a particularly good time to be working on environmental uh, issues because the nature of a recession is that we have resources that are not being used, and that makes it cheap to use them. When you say it's less expensive during the recession, the first, your first reaction, I'm sure, is to say that, uh, uh, but nobody has any money now. Maybe less expensive, but I can't borrow the money to do it. The city doesn't have any money. The city can't do it. The, the point is that the federal government is in a different situation from the rest of us. The federal government right now can borrow money at 0% interest. It has the ability to simply print dollars and pay for these things um, out of the future growth that the things themselves will create. And so now is a time for the federal government to step up to projects that traditionally have been left to individual people or to uh, cities or not done at all. After the recession, will we end up with, with some kind of uh, bill for the for the the resources that we've built, the the new infrastructure that we've built? The answer, I think, is no. And I think the answer, I think, it works something like this: at the end of the recession, we will have, if we choose to, uh, more insulated houses, which will have lower heat bills. That's saving us money. It's not costing us money. We'll have a better mass transit system that will allow people to get places that they need to go more cheaply. That will increase the amount of economic activity, not decrease it. We're about to spend an enormous amount of money. The, the Obama infrastructure plan, the Obama stimulus plans are talking about, are, are, are in the range of a trillion dollars. Uh, some economists are saying that that's too low, that we're going to need to spend more. Uh, if we're going to spend this money, we shouldn't be spending it on uh, restoring the old, non-working economy. We spent um, uh, now 700 or $350 million on gifts to the banks, and we're going to spend another $350 million um, finishing up this rescue package. Um, and the question is, what are we getting for our money? Is it useful? And should we be doing this? I, I, I would say this. You can't have a capitalist system without capitalists. And the capitalists are in the banks. When a banking system collapses, the capitalist system collapses. And I think that's what's been driving uh, the the governmental activities of the last six months, the, the, stimul the, the fiscal rescue package. you got to rescue the banks. There just doesn't seem to be any choice about that. Now, having said that, you can rescue the banks in one way, or you can rescue the banks in another way. Uh, I don't think there's any particularly good justification, I certainly haven't heard any, for simply handing money to the banks that they then shovel out the door to their highest paid employees to their CEOs or to their shareholders. Uh, that doesn't have a system-wide impact. All that does is take the best off people in the country and rescue them from their own mistakes. Now is a time for ambitious projects, major infrastructure projects. And the nature of infrastructure projects is that they last for a really long time. So now is, is the best possible time to start thinking about what we want the country to look like next 20 years. I would look for the things that are going to have the biggest long-term impact, that are going to um, not only change things in themselves, but cause other changes to, to flow from them. From a global warming perspective, there are three places in which we can make major impacts right away with infrastructure projects. Mass transit, heat loss in our buildings, an electrical transmission system that will allow us to use free energy from the sun and the wind instead of being dependent on uh, coal and, the res and, and, and without the consequences of global warming. Normally the problem with the, gov the federal government simply printing money is that we end up with more dollar bills chasing a fixed number of goods and the result is that the value of the dollar bills drop and we, uh, and we end up with inflation. And inflation is disruptive for a number of reasons. But in a recession, the goods are sitting idle. We're not chasing them. There are people who don't have any work to do. There are factories that are closed. There are shops that are closing down. And so if we take the dollar bills and we use them to open up the unused resources, there isn't any inflationary impact. In fact, at the, 
moment we're worrying about deflation, not inflation. Um, there isn't any, uh, any driving out of other investments. We're simply taking unused resources and putting them to, re to, 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 uh, to useful use. Our whole economy is based on shopping, you say. <laughs> um, that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem because people, ha people's happiness is based not on shopping, but on being productive members of a community. And so we need to switch the way we think about it, to not think about ourselves centrally as consumers, but to think about ourselves centrally as producers. And that means when we think about the economy, we should be, to my mind, we should be thinking first and foremost not about what stuff does it produce, but what jobs does it produce. And that's something where, where I, I think in, for, for a period of at least a generation, uh, we've seriously failed. We no longer produce jobs for average Americans that can enable them to live uh, successful and dignified lives. That's partly a function of the jobs themselves. It's partly a function of pay. So median pay has been dropping for the best part of a generation. That is, people in the middle of the country are making, in the middle of the economy, are making less money than they were making a generation ago. Uh, so the benefits of, the purely economic benefits of growth have gone overwhelmingly to the top 10% and on the top 10% to the top 10% of that and to that top 1%, mostly the top 1% one, 1 of that 1%. For people in the middle, the, the, the story of the last decade, the last couple of decades, the last generation, is a story of um, a lack of progress. So as we think about how to come out, how we are rebuilding this economy, as we come out of this crisis, what we're looking for seems to me that we should not be attempting to replicate what we had. So what we had wasn't working. It wasn't, it wasn't useful. We should instead be thinking about new ways to put people to work, um, starting with the people who've had the most trouble over the last generation. So uh, men with high school degrees. Can we find something important and useful for them to do? Uh, but then progressing from that to all the rest of us uh, who also need useful things to do. That took a lot longer than a minute. What are we going to do, Dan? <laughs>